All right, welcome back to a very exciting episode. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I installed my ice maker over here. We've been running this for quite a few days now, loving it. I do a DIY homemade fold-out table build right here to get us more countertop space right here, which Tiffany desperately needs while she's cooking on the Blackstone. And we replace some of the lights underneath the outdoor kitchen as well to a waterproof rope light. I'll go over a couple things in here because we're always getting asked questions about how's outdoor kitchen holding up. So we'll discuss some of that, some things we like, some things we wanted to improve. So let's get started. We got some building and installing to do in this episode. All right, now this is something I'm quite excited about. And apparently y'all are too, because y'all have literally sent me hundreds of comments over the last couple of years asking why I do not get an ice maker from this company right here. I mean, take a look at this. I could put those comments up all day long and they can just keep flying by like this, literally hundreds. And it's mainly spurred from my homemade ice maker build video that's done very well on the channel. And I knew eventually I was gonna get an ice maker because this is gonna produce better, tasty nice. This is the kind that melts off and it freshens up. This is your typical drinking ice that you're used to. And now that we have a pool, we're about to be building a deck. We use our kitchen all the time, especially, well, summertime and fall, it feels great being out here as well. Uh, we might start getting into a few little adult drinks and everything else. You know, it's so nice to have some ice right here on the porch. So I do want to give a huge shout out and thank you to this company, Vivo, right here. You know, they sponsored a lot of our outdoor kitchen builds to apply us all the stainless uh, doors and drawer sets that you've seen. And they did offer me this ice maker. They've actually been offering me one for forever, but I told them, hold on, let's wait until I'm ready to put it in the outdoor kitchen. So a huge thank you to them. Y'all go check them out. Links down in the description. If there's anything you need from small ice makers like this, to large commercial ice makers, to restaurant equipment, outdoor equipment, tractor equipment, tools, house stuff. They literally carry everything. Links are down in the description. If you use it, it does help support the channel so we can continue to make content like this. And I'll put a discount code down there as well to save you some money. I am addicted to their website. Not only do they sponsor the channel, but I honestly go often buy things with my own money from there as well because they literally have everything. So the reason I went with this particular ice maker right here, I was torn between two different models. One that was all stainless, but it had a slope front. That's what kept me from getting it because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit this in here and do a build out, another build out like this. It's looking like it might be too tall, but I wanted to get a square face front one in case I do build some sort of cabinet or enclosure over here for the ice maker. So that's the whole reason I didn't go with the all stainless slope model. By the way, they got like, I don't know, 30, 40 models of ice makers. They have a tremendous amount of them. The other main reason I went with this is, this is important, y'all pay attention if you're gonna put an ice maker somewhere, a drainage pump. If you're putting an ice maker somewhere that you can just run the drainage tube off the side of the porch and let it hit the grass, that's great. I have too long of a run and I didn't want to see a tube. So I'm actually gonna be installing this drainage pump. This particular model come with it. By the way, I think they sell a spare drainage pump so you can add it to any model. It also comes with a water filter and a few other parts in here. So that's how we're gonna kick this video off. Let's install the ice maker because I wanna run it for quite a while before I honestly recommend it to you. It's the only fair thing to do. This model claims it makes like a hundred and something pounds a day, I gotta remember. And the capacity, I already knew going into it. A lot of them claim like 30 to 40 pounds capacity. I think that's if it were to fill all the way up here, but it would dump out. Looking inside, it looks like it'll probably hold 15 to 20 pounds of ice continuously. All right, let me show you the few basic connections you'll have to do. On the back side of the ice maker, it comes with a large three quarter inch thread on connection. Just thread that right on. It comes with a provided hose. Here is your drain tube hose and your plug-in cord. That is all the connections you make. Now I do want to let you know, depending on the water filter length of the hose, you may have to move some of the components around, which is really easy to do. So it comes set up with these connectors on each end. I wanted to use their long section of pipe because the way I had to run it and put that three quarter inch fitting on this side and take this smaller fitting off the other. So you can pop that little blue tab out, push down on this little white ring, and you can pull the hose right out and swap your fittings around. Those same fittings are on the end of your water filter. Now pay attention to your water filter. It has an arrow on it and the flow has to go one direction toward the ice maker. 
I'm in here behind my refrigerator. I'm going to put a water pump in here again because I don't have area for the tube to run all the way outside and drain off the porch. And we're going to pump back up in toward, well, the sink drain right there. So let's get to replacing all that. Now I did buy a special fitting in order to tap into the water coming out of my house. I'm going to show you that here in just a second as well. And here is my condensate pump. So it comes with another tube here. I may have to get a longer tube. But this is what I'm going to run up into the dishwasher drain on the sink itself, which we're about to install. And then there's another large opening right here where you put this large black drain line into here. Plug this in and it's all automatic. It has a float inside. So once this starts draining and it fills up to a certain level, the float kicks on, activates the pump, and then it pumps out this tube to wherever you run it. It can go to a sewer, a drain, or underneath the sink like I'm going to do. All right, so if you take a look under my sink, this here is called your tailpiece. This section right here, it connects to the bottom side of my sink drain and then goes down into what's called our P-trap right here. So we're going to be removing this section just by loosening up these clamps and the one up top. Now I can slide all this apart. And I went to Lowe's and bought this adapter right here. This is for a dishwasher. So it's the same length tailpiece, but it has this adapter right here to where I can run that drain tube in and now we can drain straight in there but this is typically how a dishwasher drains now my drain tube is smaller than this opening so once i stick that rubber tube in here i'm going to silicone it in place so if i ever were to have a backup in my system and the sink couldn't drain and it fills up with water we don't want it spewing out of this piece right here underneath my cabinet so i'll shoot that full of silicone once the tube's in there and then i'll tape it to hold it and let everything set up Okay, so we have to connect up our water line underneath and there's many different ways you can do this. It just depends on what type of plumbing that you have. But I already have a quarter turn valve underneath, right back there, that has the line coming down from my sink. But there's only one connection and this is glued to the house. So I really don't want to cut that off. I could find a quarter turn valve that has two quarter turns on it. One for three eighths, which goes to my sink. The other is quarter inch right here for ice maker hose or water hose just like what's going to this ice machine but i found this little adapter and i have never before seen this in all my years of just kind of doing my own personal plumbing but this will thread on to where that sink line is that i just showed you three eighths then it has quarter out you do have to use quarter inch compression fittings then it has three eighths out the top to re-hook up my uh, sink line and then i can still use my quarter turn valve underneath to kill both at the same time I would love to be able to kill them individually, but I don't feel like cutting my plumbing off the house, so this seems like a good little solution. But I've never seen this tee before. The other thing worth mentioning, I always keep spare quarter inch water line around or this called quarter inch ice maker line because you don't ever know when your ice maker inside may spring a leak. And I needed it to extend from the filter that's behind the refrigerator up to here because what was provided was not long enough. And right off the rip, I have a leak. No, I am missing a seal. There should have been a rubber gasket in there. Let me make sure it's not anywhere else. Otherwise, it looks like a garden hose, rubber seal. I have plenty of those. But let me look in the packaging. Maybe they just forgot to include it. 
Aha! Look what we got here. <laughs> There's my rubber gaskets. They were inside. I foolishly just didn't see them. That is my fault. That is a very thick rubber gasket too. And here's the smaller one if you wind up using this to thread straight to pipe coming out the wall, which I did not have in this particular case. All right, this goes in there, seal it back up, and I think we're good to go. I want to get this cleaned out. Ice makers are food grade appliances, everybody, so keep this in mind. I want to wash and clean this out. There's the drain port. By the time I kind of rinse this out, I'll be able to test the drain pump behind the refrigerator as well. This should go down, hit that pump, and then it should kick on and go to the sink. And you always want to clean out your water tray as well. So I want to wipe all this down, get it nice and clean. And this is something you should do every so often anyways. You can see your water tray has a drain down here, it looks like. So you could flush it out, wipe where you can. I recommend doing that realistically once a month. All right, with that leak fixed, I don't see any more. I just poured two cups of water in the tray in here. I heard it hit the pump, the pump kicked on automatically as I call it, and I could hear it going down the drain, so awesome. Condensate pump works just like it should. So let's turn this on. This thing is straight out as you've seen it, it's hot. Let's see how quick it'll make ice from a completely hot point. I know it'll make it a whole lot quicker. I hear it pumping the water in. I know it'll make ice a whole lot quicker once we get some ice built up in there and get the temperatures down. cube size wow those are actually solid and crystal clear this is what you want for your drinking ice crystal clear and I may have adjusted the ice cube size too thick these didn't break apart good but I do like a thick ice cube it'll last but man I wasn't expecting it to be that clear that's awesome this would be much better tasting ice than my homemade ice maker. All right, so I think I am gonna adjust the ice cube size down, what you do with these two arrows right here, but you have to wait until, I think it's actually, okay, you gotta go up first, then you can go down. I guess that unlocks it. Go down to number five. All right, so the ice machine has been running for a couple of days, and we've already been using it quite a bit out here around the pool and outdoor kitchen. It is pretty much full, although you can see it's still counting down, so it's about to dump again. Thank you, buddy. I'm not like, you know, right in the middle of shooting here. And we're not trying to be exact, so it's still going to dump. But the reason I know it's full is because look at this. We're filled up here. There is a little lever tray right here, so when the ice dumps down and lays on top of this, it holds this flapper down, which doesn't make contact with the magnetic contact over here, and it tells the ice machine it's full. So I may get one to two more dumps, which could be, you know, another pound plus of ice, but this is close enough for us to go ahead and kind of measure what we got in here. This entire box, if you could get it to fill up, would probably hold 30, 40 pounds. I'm assuming what's down here is 15 to 20 pounds. Now, if you kept raking ice out of the way, it would keep filling up and you could get a lot in there, but I'm more concerned about what's it gonna fill up to and stop. All right, y'all, I'm not trying to be scientific here like I did in my homemade ice maker. There's still several pounds of ice down in there. You know, we're gonna say probably three or four. Go away these two bags. I'm gonna leave some ice in here because Tiffany's getting home early today. And well, we're getting back in that pool and we're firing that margarita machine back up. So I wanna go ahead and leave a little ice to start building back up even though this is about to dump again in six minutes. I'm gonna do it like this and barely hold the bag up. So there's the bag, my hand off. You can see I could have filled it quite a bit more. There's seven pounds. Almost seven and a half pounds, 14 pounds. Probably another four pounds over in the ice machine and about to dump. I think realistically my guess of 20 pounds in the bin before it cuts itself off looks to be close to correct. And here with all my other ice, cut these off since I've got plenty right now. We're ready to go for another boating trip. It's coming up this weekend. 
All right, so something else we need to work on here. We have absolutely loved our outdoor kitchen. It's been one of the biggest series we've ever had on the channel. A lot of y'all have got some inspiration from it. Glad it helped. And I get asked all the time, how's it holding up or is there anything you regret or wish you would have done? So honestly, nothing has broken, no issues, no problems with wood delaminating like people thought. And we've had blowing rains under here so many times. My Vivor doors and drawer sets, all my stainless doors, I get asked about these constantly. They're holding up great, no issues, no hinges have went out, nothing. That works just like it should. The black stone, everything. I'm glad I vented around the black stone because I get asked about that all the time. It does put off a lot of heat, but the venting, putting big gaps all the way around, allows the heat to escape. And especially having this wall mounted fan up here, we kick it on every time we cook and it just moves the heat right off this end of the outdoor kitchen. No cracks in the tiles, no grout problems. Seriously, everything is great. The one regret I can say that I do have, and it's a minor one, is lack of countertop space on the cooking side. We have a 36 inch black stone right here, and we have a large five burner cooktop over here, a gas cooktop, just like you find inside of a house. So when Tiffany's out here doing a lot of blackstone cooking, she normally brings out all kinds of spices and spatulas and utensils, and we find that we just don't have enough countertop space right here. Now, we put a lot of that on top of this black stone lid that I have covered my five burner cooktop, but if we're entertaining for a large group and have both these things rocking and rolling, You've got plenty of countertop space over here for this cook station, but we just feel like we need a little more right here for spices and other things going on. So in today's episode, I have bought some laminated wood, which we're gonna stain and poly coat. I've found some special fold up hinges and I have been thinking about doing this for a while. We're gonna do a fold up table right here and we're gonna stain it just like these bar stool tops, which I love the way this looks. It's like an old, I don't know, keg barrel or something like that. So what I'm installing right now is a set of fold up shelf hinges and boy did I go a bit overkill. I didn't realize how beefy these were. And y'all hear me joke all the time, I got these from the same company that hooked me up with the ice machine, Vivor. I kid y'all not, they offer everything under the sun. I made it a habit of now, anytime I'm doing a project like this, I just go on their website and start looking even for things like fold up shelf hinges. These are stainless steel black coated shelf hinges so they should work perfect for being outside and they're rated for 500 pounds we probably won't ever get more than 40 or 50 pounds on this so it's going to be overbuilt like crazy but i need to go ahead and install these and go do a rough fit over there while i'm letting some glue dry and before i start uh staining and poly coating and all that good stuff All right, so these lock up in place. You flip that out of the way and they kind of fold and hide away. Now we just need to go mount these against the wall, test this out. And you can see I did a couple of wood strips on the side. That's to kind of help hide the hinges. You don't have to do that. You could do a flat board on them. But the way I'm going to get this nice and snug in there with the corner trim, all I needed was a little strip right here and I don't think you'll ever see the hinge.
All right, y'all, so now we have our new fold-out table right here that just gave us a lot more real estate for cooking. We can put our spices and plates. We can serve from here, do whatever we want with this table space, and then fold it right up for easy access into the kitchen. This was a must-have and something I've been intending to do for quite a while. And then we still got our tile top space over here if we want to put, like, say, greasy spatulas and things like that that'll clean up so much easier. So this is a welcome addition for not much money. We just gained, well, like I said, really good real estate right here. So we got our lights back working. We got waterproof ones in. That'll just add to the uh, entertainment aspect out here as well. And my goodness, you can't deny having an ice maker out here in a space like this is an absolute must have. This thing has actually been running for days. This video is one over days and we've had 95 to 97 degree days, actual temp, and it's been in the hundreds with the heat index. This thing has rocked on zero issues. Hasn't felt overheated. I don't hardly ever hear it run unless it's just cycling through some ice and it does what an ice maker does it melts a little off you'll hear it kick on drop some more ice cut off and it may stay off an hour hour and a half i don't know how long it stays off all through the night but that's just what i'm hearing through the day so i don't think it's going to be crazy on our electricity bill especially not like that pool that's behind you which has already put a huge dent in my electric bill but hey you got to pay to play right so vivor thank you so much for constantly sponsoring this outdoor kitchen series it's been such a huge success on the channel thank you all for watching and sharing it thank you for the ice machine and every that supports the channel to make everything a success this is what allows me to keep making this type of content this is what's grown the channel by the time you're watching this i think we may have hit 100,000 subscribers and it means the world to us hopefully y'all enjoy this we have so much more coming stay tuned don't forget to subscribe to the channel we got a deck coming a huge landscape project we're eventually going to do probably some more stuff to the outdoor kitchen we're going to build some outdoor furniture out here the list goes on and on and on as we continue to build out our dream home and share all these ideas with you. We'll catch you on the next video.